Hello everyone. Today I'd like to give you an overview of the history of Omeract. Originally called Outcome Measures in Rheumatoid Arthritis Clinical Trials, the first OMRAC conference was held in Maastricht, Netherlands in 1992 and addressed the ongoing challenge of improving the accuracy and responsiveness to change of clinically relevant endpoints. Several initiatives finished in a consensus subsequently ratified as the WHO ILAR, core set of outcome criteria in randomized clinical trials in rheumatoid arthritis and facilitated development of the ACR and ULAR response criteria. OMRAC 2 held in Ottawa, Canada in 1994, focused on the balance between efficacy of treatment and its costs. The conference was organized into three parts, toxicity, health status measurement, and economics. This resulted in three ILAR task forces that have produced recommendations in these areas. These recommendations continue to be refined as data from randomized clinical trials becomes available. OMERACT, now redefined as Outcome Measures in Rheumatology, held its third conference in 1996 in Cannes, Australia. OMERACT recommended core sets of outcome measures to be utilized in randomized clinical trials in osteoarthritis and osteoporosis, initiated discussions of psychosocial measures, and began to address issues related to radiographic and MRI imaging in rheumatoid arthritis. OMRAC's fourth conference was held in Cancun, Mexico in 1998 and recommended domains and outcome measures appropriate to longitudinal observational studies, a core set of outcome measures for randomized clinical trials in ankylosing spondylitis, and domains to be assessed in longitudinal observational studies and randomized clinical trials in systemic lupus erythematosus. In the year 2000, OMRACT held its fifth conference in Toulouse, France, and discussed definitions and methodologic classifications for minimal clinically important differences and initiated work to establish a core set of data for cost-effectiveness evaluations. The imaging module continued to review X-ray data in rheumatoid arthritis randomized clinical trials and developing scoring systems for MRI. The safety module reported on their work to establish standardized criteria for recording adverse events in randomized clinical trials in rheumatology and initiated discussions to develop recommendations for collection of rare adverse events in registries and long-term databases. The OMRAC Fellows Training Day was first introduced. OMRAC 6, held in the Gold Coast, Australia in 2002, departed from tradition in a number of ways. The most exciting change was that we involved patients in a workshop on patient perspective. We also focused this time on two major modules, economics and imaging. OMRAC 6 also validated the ORSI response criteria for clinical trials in osteoarthritis. OMRAC's seventh conference held in Asilomar, USA in 2004 included many new programs, including adding a full day to accommodate a new session format called Special Interest Groups, covering a broad range of topics, a discussion on next steps in defining low disease activity in rheumatoid arthritis took place, and further progress was made in imaging and ankylosing spondylitis and rheumatoid arthritis. There were also sessions on psoriatic arthritis and drug safety. OMRAC 8, held in St. Julian's Bay, Malta in 2006, included the participation of several special interest groups in a super workshop providing input from their specialized areas into the generic concept of surrogate endpoints. The meeting agenda included imaging and outcome measures for psoriatic arthritis and fatigue and rheumatoid arthritis, as well as workshops on vasculitis, fibromyalgia, and drug safety. In 2008, OMRAC held its ninth conference in Kananaskis, Canada. OMRAC 9 was restructured to include one module for workshops and seven special interest sessions and focused on an interesting blend of methods and conditions. OMRAC 10 was held in Kota Kinabalu, Borneo in 2010 with representation from around the world including patients from Malaysia and Singapore. The meeting focused on generic methodology of domains, instruments, and responsiveness to change from the patient perspective. A symposium on biomarkers and imaging took place in memoriam of Dr. John Sharp who passed away shortly after OMERACT 9. OMERACT 11 was held in Pinehurst, USA in 2012. 
Given that initial development of the filter took place more than 20 years ago, it was recognized that some aspects required updating. To address those issues, half of the meeting was dedicated to daily discussions regarding the filter in the context of updated general domains of health status. The entire meeting was integrated around the Filter 2.0 sessions. Specific disease or topics groups were invited to participate and present case studies for each of the Filter 2.0 discussions. Thus, practical issues related to utilization and examples of implementation informed further evolution of the filter. OMRAC 12, held in Budapest, Hungary in 2014, displayed the effort of 22 working groups. These working groups presented a broad portfolio of relevant research in three themed areas, disease-specific areas, imaging and biomarkers, and methodology and cross-cutting themes. OMRAC 12 saw the further evolution of the OMRAC filter 2.0 with its expansion from the original filter focused on tool development to the development of core outcome measurement sets starting with the appropriate stakeholder group inclusion and development of core domain sets. As well, the development of the OMRACT handbook, which contains both methodological and organizational information, was created. The handbook provides a major reference resource for all those interested in outcome measure development. The 2016 meeting in Whistler, Canada was the 13th OMRAC meeting and was a success with nearly 200 participants. One major focus of the meeting was the implementation of the instrument selection part of the OMRAC filter 2.0 that incorporates a number of clinometric advances that have occurred since the original filter. Truth, discrimination and feasibility continue to be the pillars of the filter unique to OMRAC. But as part of the transition to the new filter 2.1, in order to select the most promising instruments, participants presented more detailed data on concept match and feasibility. After small group discussions, draft recommendations were brought to a plenary for a vote at this stage. Dissemination and promoting uptake of core sets known as knowledge translation was another major focus of this meeting. Participants were invited to propose and discuss recommendations for the OMRAC community to strengthen stakeholder involvement in the core outcome set development process and promote dissemination and implementation of core outcome sets with a specific focus on the potential role of post-regulatory decision makers. There were numerous innovations and firsts at the 14th OMRAC conference in 2018 in Terrigal, Australia. In the lead up to the meeting for the first time, pre-meeting webinars were hosted by the OMRAC patient support team to prepare patients for their active participation in their groups. The newly formed technical advisory group reviewed workshop workbooks prior to the meeting. A new emerging leaders program was created to further develop knowledge and skills as mentors and future working group and OMRAC leaders. A working group met virtually with participants in Canada and France LinkedIn. The OMRAC Way made its debut with a whiteboard video on core domain set selection, along with the introduction of the OMRAC Summary of Measurement Properties table. The Psoriatic Arthritis Group presented the first two instruments to receive OMRAC endorsement, and a pre-meeting addressed drug safety from, from the patient's perspective with patients, regulators, and OMRACters engaged in interactive discussions.